Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen from the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Welcome to my session. I believe that you are here today because of your interest in event-driven architecture and that you already know and understand the basic concepts and benefits. In the next 20 minutes, I will tell you how to build your first large-scale, low-latency, EDA, end-to-end -end solution. Is this impossible? Let's try. Many organizations have built lots of the products writing on different technologies to provide better customer experience. For example, a web application needs to provide rich information while a mobile can focus on easy interaction. An ATM may display less information but provide more shortcuts. Even though these products have the different UI requirements, but they share over 90% of data and provide the same set of servers, such as e-payment, ticket selling, and account operations. Now, we will design an end-to-end -end EDA solution to cater to all of these products step-by-step. -step. First, let us have a look at the user requirement. We need to support at least three different types of product, mobile application, web application, and ATM. Each portal will have at least 100 pages. Over 60% of the information will be frequently updated. And the latency must be within two seconds. All kind of products must provide full functionality to the customer. Additionally, as part of the mandatory non-functional requirements, a common framework must be built to support high performance high throughput and low latency for multiple channels. The whole infrastructure must support up to 200,000 concurrent connections and it must be easy to scale. All servers must be reusable. Regardless of having a RESTful pulling architecture or EDA pushing architecture, the backend systems needs to expose a set of surface endpoints and register these endpoints on the surface catalog. For example, the information update surface and ticket selling surface on a traditional RESTful pouring architecture. Every channel needs to build up a catch layer on the top of backend surface catalog to catch information, restructure data, and customize the channel surface endpoints for each page and component. This means hundreds of the new channel surface and interface. And we, need, we will need to keep building new surface to cater to new UI enhancements. And any change on existing surface endpoint will affect lots of non-related pages. On the other hand, if the data overlaps on the different channel surface, then the client needs to apply complicated logic to handle data consistent issue. In an ETA design, the backend surface will push information to the client side or event bus when the event happens and will directly expose the B2C request reply surface endpoints to the client side. We won't need to maintain any surface on the channel application layer and the channel developer can be more focused on UI-related coding. In a RESTful pouring architecture design, we need to set up hundreds of web servers and application servers between the client and the backend servers to cater up to uh, 200,000 concurrent connections. We need to duplicate these servers for each channel because they need to handle the same volume of traffic. We can use the CDN to decrease the traffic by 95%, but the B2C request reply call will bypass the CDN, as in the case of ticket selling and account balance inquiry. On the client side, the polling frequency cannot be set to less than five seconds because it will affect the client device performance. And the actual value will be depend on the low test result. Similarly, on the CDN, we need to have balance 
between the TTL value and latency, a longer TTL value will provide a better hit rate, which can save on infrastructure costs, but it will introduce extra latency. In a restful polling design, the total latency is at least 14 seconds. In an EDA pushing design, we will use the event bus to replace the red server and the application server. The backend servers will directly push the Delta update to the event uh, bus, and then the client can subscribe from the top end. And we don't need the CTN server to catch the information because the event bus has enough the capability to handle up to 200 functions concurrent connections. You can store static information such as the image, icons, and products description on the public cloud storage, and then set up a CDN in front of the cloud storage to handle traffic. The client device needs to get the snapshot information to build the cache layer before it handles the Delta update. You can set up a cache server to store the latest information and the client can make a request reply call to get the latest information from a or a message bus. When a application starts up or opens a new page, the EDA pushing architecture can decrease end-to-end -end latency by over 85%, which is from 14 seconds to two seconds and save millions of investment on the infrastructure. There are three preconditions before you decide your first EDA solution. First is infrastructure, whether it is a standalone event bus or a well-defined event match covering both public cloud and on-premise. Second is an event portal for event management. The last one is a monitoring and troubleshooting solution, which must be integrated with your organization's existing solution. After you, you are in one fulfills these preconditions, you can proceed into your detailed solution design. First, you need to fully understand the whole application design, include the data flow, and set a corresponding event bus configuration for it. For example, an exclusive queue must, can be used for the active standby design. non exclusive queue will be used for the fan out case. Additionally, we also need to guide the development team to design a multiple flag framework to handle thousands of messages per second. Secondly, you need to follow the naming standard and the event flow control guideline. To define your event flow, please remember, you need to use the parser to implement the asynchronous request reply. I strongly suggest that you use a lightweight open protocol such as MQTT to decrease the message size and avoid vendor login. You should enable SSL on the whole path to protect all events and all applications must use Kerberos or OAuth to log into the event bus. It is important for enterprise to establish naming standards, and a well-defined topic naming structure can align the organization's information data models with the business. A well-defined naming standard should include two parts, a mandatory and an optional part. The mandatory part should include at least four fields, information domain, information subdomain, measure type, and schema version. Let us use the e-payment service as an example. E-payment requests are triggered on different channels, web, mobile, ATM, and bank, and then sent to the corresponding payment service for separate event flows. As you can see, the first three event flows are for EFT, PPS, and FPS, while the last one is the fund transfer from the bank. On each event flow, the red color is the mandatory part, which will be pasted. 
in the message header and brought forward to all subsequent messages in the phone. This part should not be changed throughout the lifetime of the event flow. For each component, the output topic will be the input messages mandatory part plus the components function plus the process status. It is very easy to subscribe all of the corresponding events within the same event flow by using a wildcard. This topic structure gives you the flexibility to add or remove any extra steps to or from the entire data flow when the business flow is changed. All you need to do, just change the consumer's the subscription rule. For example, if you want to add a extra step, a contract service between the login session chair and the bank service, you just need to change the subscription rule of the bank service. If you want to send the final result to the customer or SMS or email, you can add a new subscription rule on the request queue of the SMS or email service. You don't need to make any change on the existing application coding. To change subscription of individual components, you don't need to code anything in the topic routing logic. For example, in the backend account service, different payments event flows to update customers' balance is easier, easily handled, and the status is returned to the corresponding topic. Request for the updating customer profile, just like the phone number or system configuration, for example, the timeout value, should also be catered to. As such, the header for incoming messages have to cater for the mandatory part of the topic name, while the consumer backend account service just needs to process the message and post the result back to the corresponding topic. Same thing will be happened on every individual component because the mandatory part of topic name will bring forward on the whole event flow. It will not be changed. EDA is distribution control, and there is no component that will know the whole event flow. On the other hand, the event match routes events between different event bus, so it cannot tell you who is the publisher and who is the consumer. You must build the event portal to maintain thousands of the events and corresponding applications and schemas in the same space. This allows the development team to choose the right event in the design stage. And for the publisher, it also know who are subscribing to their event. This is very useful when the publisher need to update the schema. Architect also can call check all event flows and corresponding topic names to make sure that all of them follow the standard. EDA can work with the different technologies and methodologies such as SDRC, DDA, and DevOps. Product deliver cycle, cycle can be discreted from 12 months down to two weeks. EDA models help decouple systems while the event portal provides a platform to create, maintain, and govern thousands of the applications, events, and schemas. Writing on agile development, we can split the development lifecycle into a smaller spring to cater any required change. With this, the change process can be repeated weekly or even daily. Under EDA design, all events brought forward are the superset of the origin event. Each surface can be built to collect and analyze activity about the current application and customer behavior in order to enhance user experience and interactions. All of these new functions will not affect the existing flow performance. Today, all people agree that big data analytics can help 
provide better customer experience and increase turnover. But how is data acquired? By scanning the application database or setting up an agent to steal message on the application server or adding extra logic and interface on every application. Today, EDA provides the best solution to allow real-time event collection from the event match. Why not affecting performance or adding extra logic on the application? In this diagram, the right circle represents main flow operation with multiple event flows. First, we define the product to sell, and then the product triggers the subsequent initial loss. The customer logs into their account to place a wager on a product. The turnover of this product drives subsequent off change. This circular flow that repeats. All these events can be combined together to provide feedback and insights for the business for big data, big data analytics. For example, data scientists can analyze millions of the same pattern of events to decide different campaigns to promote best selling products, remove unwelcome products or pages. Fighting systems capability based on the tax law usage statistics or provide their main promotion based on the customer activity. What have we achieved from the solution? EDA can decouple the system to minimize the impact so we can implement change by weekly with lower cost and lower risk. Blockchain technology can distribute the information to the client side in real time and avoid extra costs on the infrastructure. And this infrastructure also can be shared by multiple channel products. An EDA solution can achieve all of the benefits shown on the deck. I have presented to you the high-level architecture, infrastructure, and solution design. I hope that you can get some idea on how to implement your EDA solution. As a party note, please remember one thing, even though EDA has a lot of the benefit, the most difficult part is changing people's mindset rather than using a technology. My email is on the screen, or you can search my name from the LinkedIn. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions on the EDA. Thank you for your attention.